Hey everybody, Wayne here. In today's Let's Chat, I have a little bit of a bone to pick with the guys over at Armchair Dragoons. So they just released a podcast that are mentioned in Dispatch's podcast that references the latest Charlie Awards. So the Charles S. Roberts Awards. They were, I think it was last year, they were brought back. Um, this year is the second year. And like old grognards like to do, they complained a whole bunch, you know, yelling at clouds, shaking their fists, get off my lawn, that type of stuff. So I listened to their entire podcast. Um, two and a half hours, by the way. I mean, ever heard of an editor? So I went ahead and listened to all that. And I have a few things I'd like to talk about. No, I agree with a couple things. A couple. I mean, you talk for two and a half hours. Uh, you'll you'll say something I agree with. Um, but there's definitely a couple things that I don't agree with. Uh, now, before we get started, of course, uh, like I said, the Charles S. Uh, Charles S. Roberts Awards. So, you know, best war games in all these different categories. Um, and then with Armchair Dragoons, let's go ahead and look at, so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. So here is their website um, and the podcast. If you scroll down, look to the right here, latest podcast episodes, it's Unassembled Bag of Parts. Click that, let that load, scroll down a little bit again, and here it is. You can listen to it here if you want. I mean, if you have two and a half hours of your life, go ahead and do that. Um, the podcast features... And let's click back over to me. Um, it features Brant, who's the host, Gary of, of Ardwolf's Lair, and then Jim. I'm not sure who Jim is exactly, but he has some opinions. So let's go over a couple of things that I agree with. So they, talk, they went through all the categories. And again, there's a bunch of stuff I'm not going to talk about. My focus, you know, solitaire war games, right? Solitaire war games. I also like new war games. I like the graphics and the beautiful components and the high quality components. I think that's the future of wargaming, um, specifically solitaire wargaming, but wargaming in general. Um, when you have some old grognard, generally, you know, if it's a half inch counter with some text on it, that's all they need, right? And they, they don't care about what it looks like. That's all they care about. That's fine, but that's not how I feel. So getting into a couple of things I do agree with. The category definition need to be clear. I agree. Um, when you And I'm not going to dissect the Charles S. Roberts Awards myself. Um, this is just a rebuttal video to their podcast. Yeah, the category definitions could be a little clearer. Um, there, there's a lot of other issues with them not, um, Charles S. Roberts, whoever runs it, not really sending out information, not communicating very well, social media, not recognizing certain people have contributed. Agree with all that. Absolutely, 110%. Um, games should be in the appropriate category. Absolutely, agree with that. You know, you do have some games that maybe... Why is this in this category? You know, why is something it says Napoleonic era? Technically, it is Napoleonic era, but shouldn't it be in the Napoleonic game? You know, just like with there's a category for American Civil War games. It's not American Civil War era. It's American Civil War game specifically. So maybe narrow stuff like that down where Napoleonic should be a Napoleonic game. Um, and then the year of publication release. And this needs to be confirmed. You know, you have a couple games, I think, that either came out in 2021 or maybe 2019 that were in the 2020 awards. And that's, let's be clear. So it's the 2020 awards. This is 2021, but it's all the games from 2020 or was supposed to be. All right. So that is the short list of things I agree with. Let's get to what I disagree about. So first one at 21 minutes and 40 seconds or so, approximately 21 minutes into the podcast. They ask the question, is the Shores of Tripoli a war game? Jim says Shores of Tripoli is wildly popular because it's a Euro not a war game. It is not. No definition of war game that includes Shores of Tripoli is a good definition. He later says, this is the problem with the Charlies doing what they are doing. Suck up to the Euro gamers all you want. Chase the little plastic toys all you want. It's not war gaming. A little hot take there from Jim, right? So let's let's talk about a couple things. One, there's no plastic pieces in Shores of Tripoli. It does have some wooden blocks. Also in coin games, uh, very... I mean, pretty heavy war games at times. Um, it has wooden ships, beautiful component. You know, no, there's not, it's not little half inch counters with numbers on it, but okay, fair enough. It's still not plastic though. But anyway, let's look at a, some definitions of war games. One definition I found, a war game simulates an armed conflict, be it a battle, a campaign, or an entire war. How about a second definition I found? A war game is adversarial. There must be two opposing sides whose players react intelligently to each other's decisions. Okay. How about a third definition, a much longer one? War games are games that depict military actions. War games are set in a variety of timelines, from the ancient period to present conflicts and even in the future. 
Thematically, war games cover everything from actions between small units on a very small board to larger, extremely detailed conflicts and even global scale wars. Although most war games are based on historical situations, there are war games based on fantasy or science fiction, as well as war games based on hypothetical but historically based situations, i.e. nuclear war between the Soviet Union and the USA, World War III. Um, and fourth one, not specifically for war games, but I just like this. Finally, Supreme Court Justice Potter Stewart, when attempting to define hardcore pornography, hopefully it doesn't get me banned off uh, YouTube, by the way, um, said, I know it when I see it. If that's good enough for the Supreme Court, it's good enough for me. Now let's look at the Shores of Tripoli that Jim has a big problem with. So what exactly is the Shores of Tripoli? It's a card-driven historical game on the first Barbary War. One side plays the United States, the other, to the, the, the other side plays the Tripolitania forces, um, the Barbary states, right? Tripoli, Algiers, Tunis. The game is played on a map of the Mediterranean. Each side, you know, you, you have a hand of cards, you play cards. They can be played for their historical events or for generic action, such as movement, building ships. Um, both, ships both sides are, by, are building ships, which can fight each other. You can blockade harbors. You're bombarding troops on land. There are, there are also troops on land that, you know, United States, you're landing them, and then you're moving towards, right? Shores of Tripoli is no different than any other card-driven war game out there. How can you think otherwise? So for the inaugural... And this is something I'm starting. The Old Man Grognar Award, the inaugural and the very first award goes to Jim, which is the first award of the day. Congratulations, Jim. All right, let's continue on. So an hour 30 in, and yes, I listened to all of this, although I did speed it up a little bit. Shh, don't tell. And an hour 30 or so, they talk about solo and co-op games. Now, Gary Ardwolf from Ardwolf's Lair, is upset. He's upset that the Shores of Tripoli is even in this category, much less wins it. Huh? The game has solitaire components out of the box. It says there's solitaire rules in the rulebook as printed when it you know was first printed and delivered, the game itself. There's cards that reference solitaire rules. It what? It literally has solitaire in it from the production from the get-go. This isn't something tacked on later. It literally shipped with the game. Um Gary then asks, why isn't Albridge's Burning nominated? Well, why aren't any of the other plethora of just excellent Solitaire War games nominated? You know, there were a ton of great ones in 2020. Let's look at my top six solo war games of 2020. When I did my video, um, we're talking about First Jihad, Stilico, Last of the Romans, Shores of Tripoli, which all three were nominated here, um, Oskrieg, World War II Eastern Front, Space Infantry Resurgence, Chancellorsville, 1863. I also have a bunch of runner-ups I listed in my video. Um, and by the way, those are in no particular order. I just kind of listed my top six. Um, the Mission, which was which was nominated here. Crusader Kingdoms, Aurelian, Restore the World, which is criminally underrated, by the way. Like, I never see it mentioned anywhere. It really needs to be. It is by far the best of the three cup system um, designed by Amabel Holland of Holland Spiel. Um, Atlantic Wolves, you know, the re-release. I could go on. <laughs> Clearly, the Shores of Tripoli, it's a solo game. It's, yes, it has adversarial two-player. It doesn't have co-op. True. So definition there maybe of the category, you could, you could have issue with that. But the question, Shores of Tripoli is a solitary game? Absolutely not. Eh, Grognar take right there. So with that, the second old man Grognar award goes to Gary, which is his first award of the day. So far, tied between Jim and Gary. All right, let's move on. So about an hour 40 or so in, they talk about best playing components. Gary calls it a junk category. Jim says, it's a silly category. I don't like it. Huh? It's 2021. Components matter. Graphics matter. Artwork matters. You know, why is there a big push with mounted maps? And I'm not saying every game had or has to have them or should have them. If you have a three mapper, four mapper, yeah, no, you probably don't want four mounted maps, you know, the game's going to weigh 100 pounds. But you know, individually die cut, you know, counters, those pre-rounded, you're, you're getting from deluxe editions by Compass Games, GMT, DVG, Worthington. You know, get with the times, you old fogies. Like, this is, it's not the future of every game. So I want to be careful. Not every war game can or should have those things, right? Again, if you have a game that is multi-mappers, um, 16 counter sheets, yeah, okay, probably not, right? 
but there are so many games that are one maps or let you know one map or you know the 22 by 34 inch or so um you know one or two counter sheets a few counter sheets whatever oh yeah it and not to mention beautiful graphics right having components i just think of the high quality of them and then the artwork having clear readable while also bringing the theme to life right having individual unit artwork not just a nato symbol there's a place for that but don't look at that and just ignore it right don't ignore the beautiful artwork that's being put into war games because if we want war game hobby to grow and you want it to expand and maybe that's what you're scared of you are scared of it growing and expanding but if you do want it to and you should those are necessary for at least part of the hobby um so with that one because gary called it a junk category i got to give the old man grognar award to gary so gary that's the second award of the day what do you mean? all right finally and this one, I'm not going to give an award for. They talk about best rule book. They had a problem with the category definition. They just didn't think it should be a category. Again, bad take. What, what do you mean it shouldn't be a category? Of course it should be a category. There are terrible rule books. There are good rule books. And you kind of go and, you know, you go into almost the philosophical question of, philosophical, excuse me, question of, you know, what's a war game? Like, what's a, what's a good rule book? What do you mean? Why is it that complicated? It's easy to learn the game from. It describes everything clear, leaving you without a lot of rules questions. It has examples explaining things, how they're how they are played. It has pictures to show you those examples, to show you the counters, to show you terrain. I mean, give you those four things, right? And this is off the top, top of my head. Like I don't have a big list. I didn't spend hours on this, but yeah, it's pretty easy to know what's a good rule book and what what's not. So, you know what? Hour forty seven in that last part of the rule books. I'm done. I'm done rebutting. I I think it did a great job. So. Final tally, Gary, you finished with two of the Old Man Grognar Awards, Jim with one, and Brant with zero. Shut out for Brant. Sorry, Brant. Congratulations, Gary. Um, I'm having the, the trophy constructed right now. I'm thinking it's just going to be like a big, single-colored hex, you know, representing clear terrain, very plain, no, no fun artwork, anything like that on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and put like a little half-inch counter on there with just, you know, just a bunch of numbers and uh, maybe a NATO symbol on there. So that'll... Trust me, you'll love it. You'll love it once it's done. So now it's clear to me, this group, you, know, you guys, you put some effort in. I, I can give you a little bit of props for that. But it's clear to me that you guys need a true solitaire gamer as part of your group. Um, you have one guy who has an open disdain for solitaire wargaming, Jim, who's literally said, I hate solo games. I don't understand the point. The host, Brant, who really doesn't seem to have any opinions at all, from what I can tell. Although... To be honest, that may be a good thing for a host. But anyway. Um, and then, of course, there's the always opinionated Gary. But he clearly focuses on, you know, heavy face-to-face -face games, three mappers, 14 counter sheets. Like, th that's clearly his jam, right? So there's an obvious bias against Solitaire Wargaming here in this group, which is a shame given the importance and prevalence of Solitaire Wargaming. So that said, I think that this group needs to go ahead and find themselves, you know, someone to represent Solitaire Wargaming. You know, someone who plays a lot of solitaire games, someone who has experience, someone who has opinions, is not afraid to defend them, someone who, you know, is is good looking, well spoken, charismatic. And yes, I am available. Now, you'll wanna I'll, I'll go ahead and put my agent's information, contact information down in the, you know, the video description here, because obviously I have appearance fees. You know, I'm going to need money for, you know, hourly fees. I, you know, I need to buy extra razors, keep my head shaved nice and close. So I'm, I, don't, I don't come cheap, but I am available. So reach out to me. Well, well, reach out to my agent. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think of the Charlies? What do you guys think of their take? What do you think of my take? I mean, I know you're going to love it, right? So thumbs up the video, please. Um, no thumbs down. None of those. Hope you guys like the video. Have a little fun. Um, Absolutely great job, guys, over at uh, 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 Armchair Dragoons, for real. You guys did a great job. Um, I don't know if I could talk for two and a half hours on any topic, period, or multiple topics tied together. I don't know. That's a lot of talking. My voice is already cracking just from just from doing this video. So um, great job, guys. Appreciated seeing it. I had a little, I had fun doing this rebuttal, rebuttal video here. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you guys liked it, comment below. Let me know what you guys think. So until next time, later.